Hi folks and welcome back. With complex circuit boards done, the chemical science pack is invisible reach. At this stage of the game, another dimension of scaling happens. Productivity. But let me start at the beginning. Better seaweed modules will certainly help with upscaling in the future. It's probably a good idea to make a bit of sodium sulfate and sodium carbonate early on, and just let it accrue over time. Fungal substrate, and the improved one as well. This is the other source of phosphate rocks on my map. I put this one directly on the train network, because these rocks will be in high demand. I make the first guar. This was already available in logistics science, but I didn't want to research too many unnecessary technologies. That block again. This time I try to scale up cyanic acid, at least a bit. Industrial solvent. I will need this later. I now have access to a much better recipe to make formaldehyde. It just needs some molybdenum ore, but that's already available on the train network. At the moment, most of the coke in my mall is wasted. I try to put the acetylene on the train network. One can never have enough liquid fuel. My mall, or should I say starter base, is deconstructed bit by bit. This time, the coke oven gas, the hot air, and the voiding of coke has to go. I need more coal dust. Maybe I should stop shoving it into boilers. There's no space for another train station. Please don't tell anyone about this new belt crossing the city block boundary. I try to reduce the pressure on my logistic bots by making steam engines on the side. With enough random Mark II moon drops, I can finally make a lot more. It's convenient to have aromatics nearby. Due to not delivering sand castings, the long belt for iron plates ran empty. That's a great opportunity to get rid of it. Now there's only one ugly belt left, for stone and stone bricks. The first navens. How many more genetic experiments will I need? I built more rail blocks. Somehow the last few got occupied pretty quickly. Two more special alloys coming up. Niobium, aluminium, titanium for vet brains and self-assembly monolayer material and chromium, molybdenum, nickel only for the monolayer stuff. I need normal coal. If there's already one rope belt, why not add another? Chemistry just goes on and on. Propene and carbonyl sulfide. Rayon is actually quite important for a lot of things going forward. My third block for molten glass. This actually was my starter patch, but it still has enough resources to last for a while. The scaling of navens has begun, and yes, you are seeing correctly. I couldn't make all the buildings, because they require complex circuit boards. Now I make double the petri dishes. As you can see, there was a good reason why I wanted Mark II seaweed modules. It's time for more of the crazy upscaling. This block almost triples my output of hot air. And I still don't want to spend lamps for kickalk, so I have to build bigger. This makes phosphorus pentasulfide, also not researched yet. As you can see, I tried to get the monolayer stuff running, because just like intermetallics back then, this allows a whole lot of new infrastructure. More acetylene, this time with an integrated train station for coal dust. Geothermal water is also used in some recipes, so I simply put it onto the train network. Organic acid anhydride, from fatty acids from oleochemicals. Another ingredient for the self-assembly monolayer material. And here it is, self-assembly monolayer material. My research is really slow. 
just 12 pi 2 science packs per minute. At this point in the tech tree, that's around 3 hours per tech. But the solution is right around the corner. I just need a little bit of silver for it. Okay, so that's why the acetylene was needed. Fast inserters for brains. That doesn't look good. And a crap ton of fetal serum. Yeah, the wet brain cartridges are quite expensive. I switch oleochemicals to nichrome. I don't have the better recipe yet, but at least a few thousand nichrome in storage. And I need the glycerol soon. I should really make use of that easy sulfur. Some Mark II seaweed to almost double manure bacteria. I try to scale cobalt extract. Soon the cyanic acid will run out again. Probably. I still don't have all 42 fluid mining drills. In big numbers most buildings are expensive. More batteries. More power. More iron plates, more small parts. Preparing for more Nexolid. Preparing for more brain. I decided to use orgs for scaling brains. Mainly because they don't need many external ingredients and the buildings are really cheap. It's time to put my stored carogen to good use. I'm going to use it for bad brain cartridges. I finish my first block of orgs. As a rule of thumb, whenever I see some accessible native flora, I'm gonna build more orgs next to it. I need more nexalit. Scaling is easy now, as I have more than enough meat from all the slaughtering. More small parts again. Maybe it could also help if it actually got some iron plates. Finally, the orc slaughtering block is finished. This orc slaughtering block is finished. More power for my struggling power network. Look, I found some native flora. Time for more brains. I can't really build more than half a block at once. My inventory is too small, the robopod energy runs out, and the mall doesn't keep up. I need more iron. That's processing to additional belts of iron ore. With that much more casting going on, more sand castings are probably a good idea. It's just creosote after all, and I have more than enough of that. Nature is in my way. Time for some deforestation. My portable generator can't even keep up. That looks a lot better than the forest. Eight belts of raw coal converted into syngas, tar, coke, ash and iron oxide. It will run non-stop, with appropriate overflow voiding in place. The wet brain technology is researched now. Time to make wet brain cartridges and build a huge lab complex. A wet brain biocomputer works as a beacon, transmitting a productivity bonus of 25%. But to work, it needs more than just power. It needs those very expensive cartridges. A lab in reach of 16 wet brain computers has a 400% productivity bonus. Everyone has a different idea of an optimal ratio. With my layout, every lab has over 9 beacon effects on average. And every beacon affects 15 labs on average. A power switch with some circuit conditions makes sure that nothing goes to waste. You see, even though it needs an absurd amount of silver and brains, scaling these two items is still a lot better than to triple the whole factory. The wet brain biocomputers need 10 self-assembly monolayer material each, and I only make 3 per minute. So this will take some time. But I'm not in a hurry. First the buffers have to fill up anyway. The second block of orcs is finished. More power. This time with a slightly changed layout. There are only five technologies left until chemical science and I want to get there as fast as possible. Ethanol 
is one of the required ingredients. I scale manure bacteria even more and double tufra production. Finally, I have all the required buildings and enough cartridges and science packs. It's crazy how fast the research is going. The lab automatically shuts down when the buffers at the train stations get low. But at that point there are still some items left in the machines and requester chests, so I can override the mechanism for a short period of time, if I'm waiting for an important technology. And again, more power. It looks as if I'm a bit out of ideas what to do while I wait for the research. But on the other hand, I know what is about to happen. Advanced small parts, also known as the game of how many belts and inserters can you fit around a single building. More glass as well as more lamps. This will mine and process uranium into yellow cake. Just a disclaimer, in a later update to PyMods this production chain was changed a lot. I have such a huge stockpile of brains and silver that I try to make even more cartridges. More orcs need more slaughtering. I start increasing Robopod coverage in my mall. Oh look, more native flora. Electric engine units are needed for some of the next buildings, so I start making them in my mall. You knew that was going to happen. More creatures with a brain. I can already start making plutonium. The nuclear sample itself is still not researched, but everything is ready. This is why I scaled up my power so much. Particle accelerators feel like centrifuges in the early game. One gigawatt each. By the way, you better don't look at the cost of the reactor. Fortunately, one is enough. Chemical science packs need a lot of different expensive resources, but none of them in excessive quantities. The third block of orgs is finished now, also the second slaughterhouse block, and the third power plant. Now I can finally start making chemical science packs. It will take a while until the buffer at the lab has filled up and research can continue. In the meantime I add one more building for oleo chemicals and add the required train stations to make Mark II wet brain cartridges later. Those have double the effect and also double the brain and silver cost. And still they are worth it. I suddenly remember that I still have to scale up the guar. I need to make some progress after all. I start drilling for oil. The distillates are required for a bunch of things. In another long-term project, I start converting all the soot from my power plants to gold. It doesn't have a use yet, but I'd rather avoid getting gold as a byproduct of the chromium chain. Unfortunately, I have to scale navens. Remember, these are the buildings that require complex circuit boards. This oil cracking operation is still waiting for the drilling to complete. I simply put every product onto the train network with overflow voiding. I don't really care about waste in this instance. These lead containers are extremely expensive and I won't get the cheaper recipe for quite some time. So I build this far in the north, hoping for a low train priority. The fuel rods are needed for the next science pack and I'd like to start stockpiling them as early as possible. Outlet gas. I should have done this ages ago. I didn't want to spend copper, nickel, tar and organic solvent when sulfur is basically free. But these few buildings make more sulfur than all the sulfur mines I could possibly build combined. Time to upgrade acid gas and sulfuric acid. Titanium tetrachloride is an important ingredient for processing the oil distillates. That brain mark too. This should boost my research quite a bit again. I collect all mark 1 cartridges from the lab and put them back here. 
I have already queued up the lab research speed upgrades. Those improve bad plane efficiency. And after that, I will go back to more normal technologies. Vinyl acetate and EVA have been researched a long time ago. And now I need them. But I should not forget to scale the ingredients. All your chemicals and acetic acid. I have accrued enough GUAR modules for a small dedicated block. And this makes a little bit of GUAR gum. Lead antimony alloy needs some serious upscaling due to the lead containers. More vitrolloy is mainly done for safety reasons. And there is a new kit on the block, Nexolid antimony alloy. But without more antimony oxide, I will never get more antimony alloys. And the smelters need fuel. More antimony oxide needs more oxygen. In this stage of the game feels like solving one shortage after another. I make more titanium plates the old-fashioned way. The next stage of titanium processing is not researched yet. I scale up your toy. The next creatures have a very Yotoi heavy diet. And I set up the first bodos. Those are quite special life forms. I'm astonished how far I made it with just two belts of borax. It's getting time to double it. Grot is quite a boring plant in comparison to bodos. Those nuclear fungi live in a nuclear reactor and require fuel rods. I'd be fine with it, but each of those buildings needs 500 complex circuit boards. Just crazy. As I said, Grot is quite boring, just needs a bit of urea. This is org block number 4. Molecular decohesion 2 is a great technology. This completely solves my issue with cyanic acid. This will make epoxy, but I still haven't made acetone. Let me repeat, molecular decohesion 2 is a great technology. This completely solves my issue with plastic and melamine. Oil distillates are put to good use here, making acetone and phenol. These are org block number 5 and 6. No one said that bad brain cartridges are cheap. And another block to slaughter orcs. Cobalt extract is backing up. Now it should be safe to reprogram this contraption. The train network is growing. I need more fuel stations. I think I can finally support another three chemical plants making batteries. I build a dedicated nickel mining operation to support the increased production of cobalt extract. And another one for rare earth ore. Because that resource is really rare, I make an exception and cripple my rail grid. Orb slaughtering number 4. It's time to rebuild my urea block. Cyanic acid is made elsewhere now, so all the urea now makes ammonia. In my mall, I already made some Nexalit batteries and control panels Mark II and utility boxes Mark II. Together with these electronics Mark II, I now have productivity modules. I use the first few directly here to make more of them faster. 10% for free. That's great. And it gets even better with access to the first Mark II buildings. With two productivity modules, that's even 20% for free. At the moment, productivity modules are still so expensive that I can only sparely use them. But nevertheless, they are great. The last few hours were packed with great achievements. Lab brain biocomputers for productivity on labs, chemical science packs, bed brain cartridges Mark II, better recipes for the atomizer, productivity modules and the first Mark II buildings. Now I can concentrate on reaching Pi Science Pack 3. But that's another story. I hope you have enjoyed this video. 
Thanks for watching and see you next time.